like to call this meeting of the uh, Planning Commission of the City of Bay to order. Could you please rise and join us for the Pledge of Allegiance? have a roll call, please. Commissioner Holt? Here. Vice Chair Reddick? Here. And Chair Benjamin? Here. Please note that um, Commissioner Polgar and Hernandez are absent this evening. Okay, well, the good news is we have a quorum, so we get to meet. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to operate. I have a copy of the agenda, but it's in my head. So I'm going to um, begin by, oh, thank you. Uh, begin by the uh, first item, which is the uh, approval of the minutes. So do we have any additions or corrections to the minutes of January 14, 2020? And if there are none, could I have a motion? Could I move we approve those minutes? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you. Um, the next uh, item on our agenda is the public comment. Um, this is a time in our meeting where members of the public who would like to address the Planning Commission on items which are not on tonight's agenda are free to do that. We have an oral communications opportunity like that at every meeting. So um, I have one green card, um, which is not signed, but I'm going to guess that it's Tim Pond. And if that's the case, or even if it isn't, uh, would Mr. Pond like to come to the podium and push the button before he speaks? Welcome. Hi, my name is uh, Tim Pond. I live over at 651 Potter, and I uh, design accessory dwelling units. I'm speaking tonight on the, um, my concern about the allocation of Measure D certificates, which is in the process of occurring right now. You're going to run short, and it's likely that some accessory dwelling units will be denied these permits. The text of the Measure D and the ordinances which have followed through from Measure D state that the population growth is to be limited to 1% by Measure D. I feel that with the size of these units, that um, the growth is actually going to be less than 1%, that you're actually having the unintended consequence of having less housing built than you would if these were allocated to full-size homes. If all of them certainly were allocated to four or 500 foot garage conversions, you would be only building out enough for a population growth of a half or a third of a percent. So you're actually, the unintended consequence here is that we're having less housing. Um, secondly, there's different methods. There's a method for establishing the number of um, units and that is by the 1% growth rate. And there's no strict formula and it might be in ordinance, but I couldn't find it. And I don't know, there's several considerations which should be considered, and I'm not sure that they were, and hopefully you can speak to your respective council members about that in the coming year. It's the number of units allocated in the current year should be looked at. So, and then there's the unused Measure D allocations from the previous year. And I know for a fact that one or two of my clients had unused Measure Ds, and I don't think that any of them were added into the current year. And those were accessory dwelling units that were not built and probably will never be built. Uh, I think that these represent housing for low and affordable, no matter if they're under the state qualification of the legislation which calls for the you know, building of low and moderate income houses, that's what these are in many cases. In several of them I've submitted my applications for this year, which might be denied due to the number of permits. I think that <clears throat> You know, they definitely are doing this for family members that need a place. And this law, which was enacted because of the housing crisis, should be looked at as something that's important to implement through the Measure D, um, Measure D process. And then I'd like to, I hope all of you have seen the downtown map, which looks kind of like a tumor. I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't, this was established by ordinance as well and is not part of the Measure D. Uh, I don't believe it's part of the Measure D um, actual ballot measure. It was? This was part of the ballot measure itself? Okay. Well, I, I just can't understand how some of these areas would be considered downtown. Anyway, I thank you for your time. 
and I hope you'll get back to your respective council members with my concerns. Thank you very much, Mr. Pond. So I have no other um, green sheets uh, inviting to uh, the chair. I think I think we have a uh, staff would like to. Oh, would staff like to respond? Just briefly, because it's not in your agenda, um, we can't discuss it. I will be giving an update during the director's report and. We have uh, been communicating with Mr. Pond, and I want you to know that, uh, to be reassured that staff has been reviewing the Measure D ordinance, the ballot measure, and has also been encouraged by city council to dig into this a bit, and we are, we are doing that. So uh, we're just not, we're not done. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the rare moment where we respond to an item in oral communication is red letter day. So I have no other uh, requests for speaking during um, oral communications. I do have two green sheets for the public hearing item. If there's anyone else who wants to speak during this public comment period, Ed, did you? Oh, got it. So seeing none, public, hear public hearing, uh, public comment is closed. And we continue uh, with the public hearing items, the first of which is PDP 18037. Uh, in addition to the Coastside uh, Vet Clinic, and uh, I'm guessing that Brittany is going to present this item. Thank you. Good evening, commissioners. Um, so this is a project for the Coastside Vet Clinic addition uh, at 614 Christmas Street. I will go through the project details, um, give time for planning commission clarifying questions before opening it up to public comment and bringing it back to the planning commission for discussion. So the project involves an addition to the existing vet clinic to allow a new surgery room and an addition to the existing detached garage to allow a new mixed use two-story structure with first floor office, second floor residential unit. Uh, the project is on Prisma Street between Miramontes and Correas. Just to orient you, the Cunha Middle School is over here, and this is the back of La Piazza. The permits requested include a coastal development permit, use permit, architectural review, and a parking exception. Story poles have been provided as the project is located within the old downtown visual resource area, as we will go through shortly. The project review was a bit involved due to the project components, the zoning district, um, and the project site. Um, I will try to click through these <laughs> one by one quickly. Uh, so for architectural and site design, uh, the existing site plan is shown here. You can see the footprint of the existing vet clinic here, the footprint of the existing one-car garage, and the location of two storage sheds that are proposed to be removed. The proposed site plan and first floor plan shows the, ex um, the proposed new surgery room to be added um, at the rear of the existing clinic building with the existing one car garage expanded into a two car tandem garage and an office addition on the first floor. The applicant has not provided a landscape plan with this application as no major landscaping is proposed, but you can see on this site plan here that the existing pepper tree is proposed to remain and that the existing driveway will be replaced with permeable paver strips. The second floor plan shows how the residential unit will be located directly above the proposed two-car garage and office space. It will be a one-bed, one-bath. Um, as the zoning district allows, the building is less than three feet away from both the rear and the side property lines. Um, and in order to comply with fire code, there are no windows proposed um, in the second floor residence along these walls. And instead, a row of skylights are proposed to allow natural light. As you can see in the rendering, the um, new detached structure has been designed to be compatible with the existing vet clinic, including with uh, matching exterior colors and materials. 
The proposed front elevation shows how the project will be viewed from Parisma Street. You can see the vet clinic on the left side here, um, the addition, excuse me, the, um, and the new two-story structure um, will also be visible, but located at the rear of the property. The proposed north and south elevations show how the project will be viewed from the adjacent properties on Parisma Street. Again, you can see the um, lack of windows there that will um, provide neighbor privacy. Um, and you can see on the south elevation here a um, proposed ADA ramp in order to provide um, ADA compliant access to the, the front of the business. The grading and drainage plan shows that the drainage will be um, effectively captured and directed by downspouts to landscaped areas. This has been reviewed by our engineering team and as a standard practice, um, more detailed stormwater calculations will be provided and reviewed at the building permit stage. So to summarize the architectural review, the project is um, well designed and well scaled to be compatible with the existing structure as well as with the surrounding neighborhood. It provides a um, mixed use enhancement to the downtown area and is compatible with the city's single family residential design guidelines where applicable including um, for providing neighborhood conscious windows, or sorry, um, neighbor privacy conscious windows. For land use plan conformance, uh, the most applicable policies are related to visual resources and historic resources. The site is not adjacent to ESHA, is not located on a coastal access route, and is not located in an area of mapped or known arche um, archeological resources. So starting with historic resources, the site is listed as a contributor on the city's historic resources and contributor inventory, um, noted for its bungalow architecture. Um, in cases where a project proposes any additions or alterations to such a structure, our municipal code relies on the Secretary of Interior's rehabilitation standards for review. So to um, help in this review and provide evidence of um, conformance, the applicant submitted a Secretary of the Interior's Compliance Analysis Report. This was prepared by a qualified historic preservationist um, and compared the project to the rehabilitation standards. And the report did review the originally proposed site plan, which included the VET um, the clinic addition located at the front of the property such that the front facade was significantly um, different from what you see today. The report did find that this um, addition and uh, remodel of the front facade was significant and adverse and um, was not compliant with the Secretary of the Interior Standards. Um, this element of the project was subsequently redesigned so that the clinic is located now at the rear and there are no um, proposed changes to the front facade. The report also found that the new detached structure is compliant um, with the Secretary of Interior Standards as it retains the historic integrity and um, harmonizes the bungalow architecture. So the project is located in the downtown visual resource area, as I mentioned, for the story poll requirement. The um, policies for this area um, require a review of um, providing a scale and style that is similar to the immediately surrounding area, um, continuity in buildings on Main Street, and retaining key architectural features of existing older structures. Um, of course, this property is not located on Main Street, but this intent is still met by uh, meeting the, the setback lines and being compatible with the residential aesthetic of the surrounding neighborhood. Um, the historic architecture report also provided um, help in review of these required findings by, um, by providing supporting evidence that the new development is uh, consistent with the existing historic feature and does retain that historic integrity. 
so as the project is in the old downtown resource area, that also places it in the downtown specific plan. Um, the specific plan does have similar um, policies uh, supportive of the old downtown visual resource area. Um, above and beyond that, the specific plan asks, um, encourages mixed use projects as is proposed here. Um, it also uh, looks at maintaining existing trees and providing street trees. So as we, um, as I mentioned, the existing pepper tree is proposed to be protected on site. The um, draft conditions of approval include conditions requiring submittal of a tree protection plan prepared by a certified arborist to, um, to ensure uh, this tree is protected effectively. We do um, see these often, especially um, in similar cases where there's an addition to a, a rear yard that has existing um, trees and landscaping. Um, typical tree protection measures include protective fencing and having a certified arborist on site to monitor, um, as well as follow-up monitoring, but our condition of approval does ask that these protection measures are specific to the pepper tree species. As for street trees, we did not require them in this case because this um, western side of this block of Prisma does not have um, frontage improvements or street trees. Um, this is something that the city would want to look at planning comprehensively um, and could be part of the in lieu fee for frontage improvements that are also uh, required as a draft condition of approval. The commercial downtown zoning standards um, allow zero lot lines, a maximum 36 foot height or three stories, and do not have a floor area ratio or lot coverage maximum. The project before you does, um, does have slight setback, so it is not at the, the property lines, and is proposed at a uh, lesser height of 19 and a half feet for the, the new two story structure. The commercial downtown zoning also requires parking for both the residential and the commercial uses of the site, um, and a parking exception is requested in this case. So the site plan here shows the proposed parking configuration. Here is the two-car tandem garage to serve the one-bed, one-bath residential unit on the second floor. and three uncovered tandem parking spaces in the driveway, the two closest to the garage to support the employees of the clinic, and the one closest to the street um, is intended as a short-term customer loading unloading space. So this proposal is two spaces short of what um, is required for the total amount of commercial space. Um, while the um, two-car garage does meet the, um, the underlying residential requirement, the tandem configuration of both the residential and the commercial um, parking is, um, is part of the exception that you are considering tonight. Uh, so in order to improve the functionality of the tandem configuration, um, staff included a condition of approval requiring that space closest to the street to be marked or signed um, sufficiently to indicate its use as a customer drop-off drop -off space. And the applicant has also indicated that there will be an internal agreement between the residents and the employees for the need, uh, the potential need to shuffle cars um, and be aware of hours of operation and um, hours of needing to come and go. And staff um, also notes that the City's um, recently conducted downtown parking inventory noted that the, this block of Prisma does have um, sufficient on-street parking availability, even during peak hours. Um, the site configuration does um, support the need for this parking exception as well. If the parking was provided in a a non-tandem way into the to the amount that the zoning code requires it would um, require a, a significant change to the site configuration that could potentially impact the historic resource on site. I would also like to note that the um, 
draft zoning code that you reviewed at your January meeting and um, proposed or recommended to the city council for approval addresses and downtown parking standards and um, this project would be more in compliance with that draft code and um, with the exception of the, the tandem configuration. And the, on one more note on the parking exception, the um, applicant is willing to provide some um, amenity in um, to, to make up for this deficit of two parking spaces um, in the form of a EV charger um, in the garage. The um, on-street parking spaces would, would require um, frontage improvements to be in place. So the um, proposed mixed-use building does require a use permit in the commercial downtown zoning district, and this is also being addressed in the draft zoning amendment that you recently reviewed. Um, so the use permit requirements um, ask the planning to com commission to consider this finding that the established establishment maintenance and or conducting of the use will not be detrimental um, or injurious to property or improvements in the neighborhood. Um, we find that the um, project does pro um, propose an enhancement to the downtown area, it provides a live work opportunity, it provides additional housing stock in our downtown um, as consistent with our city council's priorities um, and we support the mixed use uh, use permit in this case. Finally, the um, as the historic analysis report um, provided evidence that there will be no adverse impacts to historical resources, the project is categorically exempt from the um, from CEQA um, per the section cited here. So to conclude, the project is in conformance with the local coastal program. Um, it is supportive of city council priorities, including um, enhancing mixed use and housing stock in our town center. Um, the parking is as nearly in conformance as feasible, and, and the project is consistent with our housing element, which does not note this site as a, um, as a housing site, but um, does give us that one additional infill unit um, that can be considered to make up for any unit lost on another site in the future. The project was duly noticed to neighbors with um, owners and occupants within 300 feet and to the newspaper and the um, site was posted itself. The um, applicant and owner is um, present today. Um, I believe they will speak briefly to the project and we will um, open it up for clarifying questions, public comment and discussion following that. So staff recommends approval of this project as submitted with the conditions of approval contained in your draft resolution and this is your recommended motion. Okay, thanks very much. Uh, clarifying questions, colleagues? Yes. Um, Brian. Just, did this go to our architectural review group or whatever? I'm gonna miss what we call it. This one was well in the pipeline before they were seated. Okay. It did not go to them. Um, we discussed whether or not it needed to. We reviewed it against all the things that Brittany just presented, but it had also been reviewed by the architectural historian, which had, was actually very helpful and um, consisted of a, a pretty rigorous level of design review, so staff was satisfied with that. Okay, thank you. Steve? I didn't know we had an architectural historian. Okay. I have one question, Brittany, but I think it's it's probably better for Mr. Love if if you're if Ed if you're planning to entertain questions. Would this be a good time or? Uh, we well we haven't opened the public hearing, but we're about to if there are no other questions. So do you want to? Uh, I'll go ahead and open the public hearing. Um, we have two green sheets. Do you want to ask your questions after we've heard from them or what's? Better? I don't know whether. Um, the applicant and or the architect plan to present to us 
before getting into that or not? Uh, why don't we hear from them and see what they've got, and then we'll have a back and forth if you need it, okay? So we'll open the public hearing, and uh, I have uh, two green sheets, but uh, I don't know if either of them is from the applicant. Um, uh, okay, uh, Ed, did you, did you have anything in mind? Are you, are you here to shag fly balls? No, I was just going to say it's a very good project for downtown. Um, Brittany's done an excellent job on her staff report, and uh, not much to add to it. Uh, this is the kind of thing we should be doing in downtown, and it's moving forward. Create another unit with could be a staff person and one time uh, Dr. Lawson's daughter, maybe or maybe a, a couple could live in the. Uh, unit in the back making use of kind of wasted space more parking so I think it's a very good project and fits in well with the, what's going on downtown I think so you had a you had a question commissioner yes I I, uh, I applaud the intent to um, preserve the pepper tree mm -hmm. and when I look at the plans the uh, the new unit is very close to the trunk of the pepper tree and there's quite a bit of overlap right um, where where the drip line and the and the and that structure would be so I'm, I'm just curious how realistic it is that 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 can be successfully preserved and how much of the foliage and upper part of that tree is is going to have to be sacrificed well dr. Lawson wanted to keep it uh, one of the proposals early on was take the tree down and plant two more new trees 24 inch box trees but she would like to keep it so there's going to be an arborist report and the arborist will tell us can it be trimmed back and pruned back and still maintain and survive and then going into the foundations we would have to take care to not chop up all the roots and so on and there's ways of doing a foundation where you actually bridge over roots we've done that before so Dr. Lawson likes the tree. She says it's beautiful. It loses its leaves, but it come, comes back every year. So a well-established tree, if we can keep it, I think is a good idea. Well, good. I, I wish you good luck with that. Okay. Okay. So um, before any of the additional questions, I want to invite the other speakers um, to uh, come forward. And uh, the first one is going to be Jeffrey Rogers, followed by Chuck McElvain. McInerney, I apologize. Welcome. Hello. Okay. Yep, you're there. I'm Jeff Rogers. I live next door at 600 Parisma. Uh, our property borders, or I'll share a, share a border with the two story structure uh, with the wall without any windows for the fire code. Uh, first of all, I want to just mention that there's a fairly marginal drainage currently in that area. And I'm not familiar with the, the drainage plan with this project, but uh, it's probably going to need some uh, special considerations for that area to avoid damaging our property. Uh, when we first moved in, there was a drainage problem, and I had to resolve it. Uh, so I just wanted to make sure that with an increased amount of roof area, it's not damaging my property. <laughs> uh, you know, secondly, like... My wife and I aren't really enthusiastic about having this two-story structure kind of looming over our back patio, but we don't want to prevent it from happening. Like, it's their property, like, important for them, great. Uh, so I just want to make sure that there's an attempt to keep it reasonably nice or cute or aesthetically pleasing because it is kind of blocking off a good portion of the sky uh, from our back patio. So that's it. Thank you very much. Chuck? I don't know. Speak, Hello. speak to it. Oh, you're in there, but you might be about a fist away. It's, I think it's green. Hello, can you hear me? Thank you. My name is Chuck McInerney, and I live directly behind the house uh, where, where the proposed building is going to be. Um, 
the woman who owns the house is working in the emergency department at South San Francisco Kaiser at the moment and couldn't make it. So I'm coming in her stead. I live with her. I'm just going to start off. You kind of changed my plan of attack, not attack. Love these guys. Love them. They take care of our dog. Love the idea of having uh, another structure built in. Um, I'm just curious why there was no uh, shot of what the building would look like from our yard in, in your presentation. We will. Well, that's a good, that's a better one. I've got a picture I'd love to show of what obstruction this will do to our yard and our sunshine. If, if you guys are interested, if you in can give it. it to her. That'll sure. But my goal, and I'm just going to keep it really short, is my goal is we're in the same zoning area. We have a very big backyard. We've always thought of putting in an extra unit, as these guys are going to do. But we always thought it had to be a 10-foot setback and a 5-foot setback from the sides. But it seems if it's commercial and if we turn our house into commercial, which has been a plan because Don Fitzpatrick, who owns the property, is a licensed clinical social worker with certificates to do counseling. And she's planned to do that. Is it possible? Does it seem possible? I know you can't guarantee it, but what I'm looking for is can we do the same thing on our property that they're doing to their property? Can we build a unit in the back that's two stories high that's probably about the same square footage? Is that possible for us to do also? I understand you're not asking us rhetorically, but as a matter of order, we can't actually comment directly right, right, on that question. Yeah. But that's, that's my concern. Um, I don't know if you guys got to see the pictures or not, but it's quite, it's quite demanding. It's, it's a big, their property I think is a little higher than ours, so that's the footage of the height is actually higher than what's reported. And it's gonna block off about three hours of sunshine every morning and the moonrise, which we enjoy tremendously. But we also love these people and we want them to be able to have that. I just want it, I wanna know if you think, if you think it's possible for me to do the same thing in ours. Is, is, is it open for discussion or is it, no, can't do it? We actually can't discuss it. Okay, all right, well, as long as um, I got my two cents in because I, I, this is not my first rodeo with this and I know I am not going to change anybody's decision on if it's going to happen or not. It's already done. But I did want to ask that and that's what I would love to, to know but you can't comment on that. So, um, Did those pictures change anybody's idea of what it actually looks like from the back since it really didn't show here what, what, what it could do? We'll talk about the evidence too. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Is there anybody else who wanted to speak on this item tonight? Okay, seeing none, I'll close the public hearing and bring it back to the commission. Um, Brian is ready at the button, so, oh no. Well, I, I was just wondering to staff, um, the last comment that we received, is that uh, similar, the same zoning that's on the, was that Church Street or the other street over? Church Street is also in commercial downtown. So the same zoning regulations that cover this property would Correct. Be covered. Okay. So I guess the direction to, to the speaker would be to consult with city staff, and um, um, it would be likely that, yeah, um, if you're in compliance with code and everything else, um, there's potential for it to be considered. Um, so, uh, so with that, I think, I, you know, I definitely support a lot of the goals of creating a new unit downtown. I think this is, um, you know, a, a good mixed use live work opportunity. Um, and I think it, it meets a lot of our goals with uh, the downtown specific plan and um, trying to do those sorts of things and maximizing the use of, of the crib. So overall, I'm, I'm in support of it. Um, I appreciate that you had the arch architectural historian dive into that and, and I appreciate the applicant's willingness to make changes to um, to focus in on the rear of the property there and not not make changes to the front of the property to maintain their character so um, so with that I think it's a, it's a good use of the property and uh, suitable for the area Steve thanks uh, I think this this project attempts to to do a lot of the things we've been talking about and goals that we've set for downtown. So it, so I'm, 
I'm very supportive of it. You know, the concept of of infill downtown and 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 adding mixed use uh, kinds of functions is is an important goal of ours. I, I think that the I, I like the design very much. The scale and style is going to fit in. I'm sensitive to the to the neighbors' concerns about about height. I've I've personally gone through cases where um, houses taller than mine have been built immediately adjoining mine, and and you know while while nobody loves that, I think it I think it's good in this case that the that the 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 new structure is to be quite a bit less intrusive in terms of height than what the zoning regulations would really allow. I, um, I'm in favor of the parking exception. I think as, as Brittany mentioned, we've, the, the parking zoning downtown has become sort of obsolete given our goals for downtown, given our goals of adding more residential and stimulating business. So we're in the midst of changing parking to to fit this, I, I think it, it's going to be a challenge to, to manage the the vehicles in that driveway and garage. I think you, I think it's wise to try to get cooperation between the employees and the residents for, for uh, how that's going to work. I'm the the first time someone has to move their car unexpectedly out of that garage has the potential for a pretty entertaining YouTube video. I think, but. But anyway, I, I don't think that has to be legislated. I, I, did, uh, uh, I wish you good luck in making that work with, with all those vehicles there. Certainly the, the patient unloading in that spot closest to the street is a wise thing to do. Yes, I, I, think, I think those are all the comments I have, Jimmy. Okay, thank you. Um, I also am generally supportive of the project. I think it's a very thoughtful design, um, and uh, it reflects um, a, a consonance with the way that we would like to see an increased use uh, in, in the downtown area. I do just want to ask a couple of questions because I think the, the neighbors brought up some important points that we should touch on. Um, the first one was with respect to drainage. Um, I gather that this site is is somewhat higher than at least one of the two neighbors, and perhaps both of them. And I wonder if there's a provision in our uh, conditions that assures that they will not um, uh, contribute uh, a discharge of water onto the adjacent properties. And it, if so, what are their recourses to require additional work in that area? I'm sure it's not their intention. Um, I'll, I'll let staff get a shot, and if they say, hear from you, but thank you very much. Let the record show Ed Love, the architect, offered to speak on this question. So we'll be looking for that condition if you want to keep going with your questions. Fair and enough. We'll stack them up. Thank okay, you. well, in that case, Ed, I'd like to hear your thoughts on that. I'll reopen the hearing if it's okay with the colleagues, just so he has a chance to speak. There, there might be others. Uh, there is a drainage plan for the site um, done by our civil engineers, Sigma Prime. They're well aware of ordinances and laws that prohibit any drainage from a site crossing property lines. So that's been incorporated into their into their drainage plan. Okay, so we'll we'll so there's certainly no concern from the applicant with respect to avoiding the creation of a nuisance through no, that drainage. Happen. Okay, then um, there was also a question uh, from the public with respect, I guess the right way to phrase it would be, um, thank you, yeah, we'll get there. Um, with respect to, uh, they didn't use the word, but I think I would use the word daylight plane. Um, and I wanna be sure from staff's perspective that um, any applicable daylight plane ordinance has been uh, addressed. I, my sense is that it has, but I think it's important to ask. There is no daylight plane ordinance applicable to the CD district. Right. Okay. So uh, the as you the plan started off with the existing garage, so 
that is close to the property line. And the building went in two directions from the existing garage. Therefore, the very close closeness to the property line. And there's been places downtown where built right up to the property line. You just have to have a fireproof wall. Right. That's the fun of zero lot lines, right? Yes. I yeah. agree. But I, th I felt like it was important to reveal the dialogue sure. that was going on there and uh, recognize that it, that it represents a set of trade-offs that the city over decades or at least this decade has made. with. Respect. Yeah. If, if the CD is up against a residential zone, then there is a setback regulation for it. But, right. Um, so uh, I'd like to turn to the, uh, the parking uh, exception, if I may. And I want to note with thanks your willingness to provide uh, EV uh, services in the garage. I think that's a valuable right. addition, not only for the public who might use that spot in the future, but for the, the owners. I think it's a worthwhile investment. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I appreciate that. I don't think that's in the current condition, so no objection to expanding the... How, how could I say no when I have an electric car? <laughs> so I, so I, have the, I have the parking exception argument, uh, you know, the, the explanation of why we should do this. And I'm not saying that I don't think we should do it, but I just want to walk through our thinking. Because as you, as you will recall, we had a parking exception at the Zabala house. We uh, had a parking exception at the former veterinarian clinic at 712 um, Main Street. Um, we gave guidance to an applicant uh, who's planning to build at Kitty Fernandez Park that we were looking not to create. We wanted them to skate to where the puck was, not where the puck is with respect to parking. Um, so for me, the third bullet, the one that says the expansion will not increase customer traffic, feels like the key argument. And I'm not, uh, I'm not qualified to assess that. But I, to me, that you know, the the, the idea that the unit uh, wouldn't require additional parking as the resident will be an employee, may, I don't think that the agreement actually would stipulate that in perpetuity, right? Or is that an ongoing? You know, if they sell the property, all bets are off. There's no, as probably, far as I can tell, there's probably no, not. No. Um, and while there is an abundance of street parking available, again, I think we should be skating towards the puck. One question I had was, um, I, when I went to look at the parcel, I should have noticed the striping. Have we maximized our parking on that block? That would be a yes, right? So not much we can do there. Um, so I agree with, with Steve that I think it's going to be hard to make the tandem parking thing work, to be honest. Um, you know, I think that the, uh, the idea of having a provision for a load-unload is a really worthwhile um, uh, enhancement. I do worry a little bit about the, you know, uh, the potential for noise at that site. Um, uh, don't get me wrong, I'm a fan of veterinary clinics. I wish that when Lori McKinney was applying for a clinic site near Casa Del Mar, I was the person who championed her project as a citizen because I thought it was such an asset to the community. And uh, I feel that your clinic will provide an asset as well. So these questions should not be construed as being hostile to the business or hostile to the neighbors. I, I sense that you are very neighbor-oriented folks, and I admire that. Um, so I don't, you know, I don't know if there's anything that you think we might be able to do to improve the flow of traffic. If you can think of anything, um, uh, I'm, I'm interested, but if you can't, um, you know, the only thing I would say is if the traffic increases and it turns out that there's a higher volume of automobile traffic in the area, it might be that we need some different approach, but by then the, the, uh, the cows, the horses are out of the barn. So I think it may be, it may be that this has sort of developed out the, cons the potential of the site in terms of traffic without having significant adverse impacts on circulation um, and parking. And if you guys don't have any other ideas about that, I'll shrug my shoulders. Brian. Well, I think, you know, I think you, I agree with you. The key point is not necessarily expanding um, customer traffic. Um, 
agree, you know, who knows what could happen in the future. But to me, um, the key is one, it's in the downtown core area. Um, not that a veterinary business is a pedestrian serving business, but you know, the potential for future uh, business that potentially going in there, um, you know, as our sort of dreams and vision of the downtown area sort of realize that, you know, becomes a likely attractive sort of thing that would be in there. Um, I, the fact that there is ample street parking in that area, um, and that there's enough parking to serve the proposed residents. I, all of that makes me feel, you know, pretty comfortable with with moving forward with the park, parking exception for it. So, and I think you know I agree the tandem sort of shuffling, but you know if there's a resident in there, I imagine there's you know it's pretty tight knit between the employees and the owners and who the resident's going to be there. You know they can work it out. Um, that doesn't uh, doesn't cause me a lot of concern. Yeah, I, I'd agree. I think the I think the fact that the as you pointed out the um, the customer traffic is not expected to to expand significantly, and we do have this safety net of of pretty ample um, parking on the streets around there. I I think I'm I'm, uh, uh, I'm as I said not not wanting to legislate that and trust that the cooperation between the people using the garage and the driveway can can solve it. And I will say that the EV parking and the electrification EV parking in the garage in the additional condition creates an incentive for that parking space to be a little less transient in its occupancy. Um, so um, it sounds like everybody's had their say and I hope that we have addressed the concerns of the public. Um, uh, is there a motion uh, that can incorporate the EV proposal? I'll uh, move to approve the project as proposed with the addition of the establishment of an EV charging station within the garage. Is there a second? I second that. Any further discussion from staff? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much. We appreciate your coming in tonight. So, um, that completes our public hearing item, and uh, my recollection is the next item on our agenda is the director's report. I wonder how my recollection is. Thank you, Chair. <laughs> uh, briefly, our uh, report tonight is covering your agenda forecast, and uh, starting with your next session, we are officially canceling February 25th. We talked about this at your last meeting. Uh, that will help us uh, work on quite a few other things that we've been busy about. Um, however, picking up in March and April, we, uh, we're blocking out um, every meeting with uh, very interesting projects for you. March 10th, you will see the Housing Element Annual Progress Report, and uh, Brittany will be back with the project that you've seen previously. You continued it. It was a mixed-use proposal on Mill Street, and then uh, we're, we'll, we'll update you probably an email with uh, what's coming ahead March, uh, I guess it's, I, I got the date wrong here, your second March meeting, and then into April. Uh, for reference to what's going on with City Council and things that cross over with the Planning Commission, we always like to touch on that. On February 4th, City Council accepted your recommendation regarding the mixed-use uh, districts and parking standards ordinance. Uh, staff brought forward a few additional minor changes that um, s m almost all of them we had discussed in this forum. One was a little bit of a tweak about uh, uh, research and development uses, and we added that in. Um, they had just simply not been allowed in the downtown and laboratories are allowed downtown so we crafted code to um, accommodate them in a small scale such that they be consistent and there is an opportunity actually for, for one to locate here so we can tell you about that later. Um, March, uh, well excuse me, February 18th we're planning to have the second reading go forward then to council and then uh, we'll make our submittal to the Coastal Commission and keep you posted on how that's going. We have uh, quite a few folks who contact me every week about the status of that code. They're really looking forward to it. Uh, 
City Council, March 3rd, the ADU ordinance was continued to a date certain, so that would be uh, potentially a reintroduction of a first reading. And March 17th, we will be bringing the, uh, again, the housing element annual progress report uh, needs to be uh, seen by you as well as city council before we submit it to the Department of Housing and Community Development by April 1st. Uh, we have a significant item coming up before the Architectural Advisory Committee. We have a special meeting date, February 27th, 8.30 a.m. We're taking uh, this meeting over to, to the library so that we have a larger space. Uh, they will be reviewing the Hyatt project. And we will have plenty of room for uh, community members to observe the design review process. It's, uh, we'll, we will take public comment. The public comment needs to be focused on design. It's not a, a CEQA or an impact meeting. That will happen here before you. Um, but this is, you, you have an excellent um, architectural advisory committee and I, I think folks will um, learn a lot about design review and how that process works through this, this meeting coming up. And to that end, of course, the planning commission is welcome to um, attend and observe, and if there's more than two of you, please spread out. Um, but you can you can do that. Jill, I'll just yes. ask a question on that. Mm -hmm. Just um, I know there's been some interest in that neighborhood, and just given the community and the um, the Latino community there, has there been any thought about sort of language translation or anything like that? Probably not for design review. We we did make a presentation at uh, Main Street. Park uh, quite some time ago with uh, staff who who presented in Spanish uh, to residents there. It was a 100% um, Spanish-speaking meeting, and so we have done some outreach with a version of the plans. It will be difficult to do that, I think, in design review. I'll, I'll think about it more, and I appreciate the comment. I ha we had not planned to do that, so we'll take a look at that. We do have a, an email um, list for this project. Uh, I, quite a few folks are signed up for it and they will receive a notice. Uh, I, I think we're trying to get that out this week so they have a full two week um, heads up that this is going to be uh, conducted and uh, we can, we can kind of get a sense of folks' interest. They, they tend to ping back and let us know if they're interested. Um, so. We will report out to you about that meeting. We haven't done anything quite like this uh, for a larger project yet with this with this group. So we're looking forward to that. Uh, regarding training, uh, Commissioner Polgar and I attended the training on Saturday, uh, February 1st at Sonoma State. Uh, I will just suffice it to say I, I thought it was excellent and I'll let uh, Commissioner Polgar report out about that at uh, your next meeting if she would like to. But all of the speakers were um, top drawer. We learned a lot and it was, it was a really well done uh, session and we'll, we'll try to always offer that one to you. It's, it was about their 35th time that they've done this. This is a, a really good group. And we understand uh, Vice Chair Reddick will be going to the League uh, Planning Commission Academy uh, in early March. Regarding Measure D, I promised an update about this at the, uh, for the director's report. Uh, so at this point, uh, the 2020 allocation was set up to be uh, 69 allocations, 23 outside of the downtown area, 46 within that defined downtown area. You, um, a, a speaker tonight presented a map. The, the map is the ballot measure downtown area, which was the city's former redevelopment area. Yes, it's a, it's a challenging map for us. We did not want that to have been the ballot measure map. We would like to change the map. And it's, it's not... Um, it's not easy to do that. So we've talked about this with you in the land use uh, plan update discussions. Um, at this point in the year, uh, we have uh, closed out at January 31st. Uh, we had six applications uh, for allocations in the downtown and over the 23, I think we were, I think we're about 28 
outside downtown. So yes, there were more applications for outside downtown than we have allocations for. Um, that said, uh, seven of the applications were for multifamily development. Uh, the lion's share of the rest were for ADUs or a single family home with an ADU. And then there were several uh, simply just single family homes. Because there were more applications than allocations, we are now doing the review process of each one. We are um, putting together a spreadsheet for each and every one, and we are rating them per the adopted Measure D ordinance. This is an ordinance. This is um, a lot of the ordinance is reflective of the ballot measure, and a lot of the ordinance you have, uh, there's city council had discretion over how this was set up. So. Um, it's, it's a very interesting um, thing to actually um, use versus read, and um, we're using it now. And one of the things we get to do is report to you when we're done with this process, which we should be doing in April. I'd like to get it done sooner. Uh, we know that we have people who are really waiting for their, for their allocations and confirmation of that. Um, but. That's, that's where we're at, so um, we'll, we'll keep you posted on that. City Council did ask us to review Measure D. The city attorney and I have been looking into um, kind of the ins and outs of it and where we think there's discretion and where there um, could be some opportunities to improve how it's, how it's processed. Last year, we did something new also because of ADUs, which was in... Uh, September, the Measure D ordinance allows uh, consideration of transferring unused base allocations for downtown to outside downtown. So, for example, if, if there are 46 allocations for downtown, half of those are considered base allocations and the other half are the bonus, the half percent bonus allocations. Measure D is a population growth control measure, 1% per year plus a half percent bonus in the defined downtown area. It's not a housing unit control measure. It's a growth population control measure. So persons per household is really important with how this is um, administered and we are required by the ordinance to use the latest census data for persons per household. So that is what we do and we, we bring that to city council every year. Um, but going back to September, um, in consideration of transferring outside or downtown allocations to outside downtown, uh, we recognized we didn't have a process for that. It had never been done. And so uh, we brought that to city council as a discussion item and they said, you know, we, we, we want to have a process by resolution for doing this. And so we, we drafted that, and it's um, something that we should probably show you um, how, how that turned out. I think, it's, I think it's helpful to them. It emphasizes uh, affordable units as being uh, a good reason for making transfers, um, but that uh, transferring allocations is fully at the discretion of the city council. The ordinance does not mandate that these be transferred. So that's a quite a lot about Measure D. We wanted to keep you um, fully informed because you may be hearing about it as you, as you did tonight and um, just as you go about your, your planning commission business and um, hearing from people. That, that's what your staff is doing. We're very mindful of timelines and we're being very careful. And that's our report. Thank you. Are there any questions? Um, okay, uh, thanks for the report. Uh, commission communications. Just a reminder, speaking of April, our Form 700s are going to be due on April April Fool's Day, right? So. So I've confirmed with the city clerk um, that this comes through the clerk's office to you. You will um, get an email that uh, gives you the link to the online Form 700 uh, submittal, and I 
think you should get that pretty soon. <laughs> uh, if you are concerned about it, just let us know, but um, that should be coming your way within a week, I would think. Right. Okay. If there's nothing else. I'll move to adjourn. Is there a second? I second it. Well, they've got a majority already, so we're adjourned. <laughs> Thank you.